George Pataki. He was handpicked by Senator Aldemato. His campaign staff was picked by Senator Aldemato. His own running mate called him a puppet of Senator Aldemato. Nearly a quarter million dollars of Pataki's campaign bills were paid for by Senator Aldemato until a judge ruled it was illegal and made Pataki give it back. Everywhere Pataki goes, Senator Aldemato leads him by the hand. When you call me People said you should run for president. I said, that's terrific. Now I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to say no to people. We're going to have to cut payrolls. We're going to have to give them less in education than they want, health care. The whole works. I know what's coming. I've been around long enough to know that. But if I bail out now, why did I get in in the first place? This guy can sell ice cubes in Alaska in February. He can convince you that dark is light and night is day. His speeches are wonderful. His rhetoric is elevating. But his record is a catastrophe. I blame it all on Cuomo and his policies, his liberal policies. Cuomo does not care about the victims of crime. He cares about the criminals. He's had 12 years to do something about crime. All of a sudden now, today, he's concerned? Where has he been? Bush and Dukakis on crime. Bush supports the death penalty for first-degree murderers. Dukakis not only opposes the death penalty, he allowed first-degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes. Dukakis on crime. Imagine that every American has in his or her home a movie of America on the television and the remote control in your hand. And you get to push the button. You can push forward. You can even push fast forward if you want to. Or you can push reverse. No, forward, always forward. That's what this country has done. Many Democratic politicians seeking office around the nation have shunned President Clinton, whose high negatives are viewed as more of a hindrance than a help in some locales. But here in New York, Governor Cuomo needs Clinton to help appeal to Cuomo's core supporters and re-energize Democrats who were excited in 1992 when the first Democrat in 12 years was elected to the White House. Do you believe in your ability to open your arms to everybody, every child, no matter what color, no matter what sex, no matter what condition. We believe that. We have always believed it in New York State. We have been the bastion of progressivism and civility. We're the place, New York State, that opened its arms to the world. This is where they came first. This election is shaping up to be one of those classic American elections that gets replayed every so often in our history. A race between hope and fear, a race between tomorrow and yesterday, a race between people who appeal to what is best in us and those who tell us that everything is just terrible and we ought to lash out. A race between those of us who challenge the American people to do better, who try to empower them to make the most of their own lives, and those who offer them cheap and easy promises of a time which never was 
and never will be. The relationship between Cuomo and Clinton has been far from congenial in the past. Cuomo was never fond of Clinton's middle-of-the-road Democratic Leadership Council, and the governor was extremely displeased when a phone conversation recorded by Jennifer Flowers caught Clinton saying that Cuomo acted like he was in the mafia. Cuomo, who almost ran for president himself, endorsed no one in the New York primary. At the rally, Cuomo reminded supporters that it was the pivotal New York race in 1992 that set Clinton on the course for the White House. And do you remember where he was selected, in whose state he was selected? It was right here in New York State. The two Democrats need each other more than ever in 1994. Cuomo wants to win his toughest race in a dozen years. Clinton will need the help of a Democratic governor in New York and all of his organizational apparatus if Clinton is to win re-election in 1996. Folks, I want to ask every one of you in this enthusiastic crowd to leave this place and promise yourself that between now and Tuesday, you're going to find three or four or five of your neighbors and friends who haven't made up their mind in these races, who aren't sure how they're going to vote in the governor's race, tell them to take a deep breath, sit down and have a cup of coffee with them, and talk about moving forward. I'm going to say Mario Cuomo is going to win this election. But I am going to say he is going to win it by uh, a piece of uh, cellophane. That's what I think. I think it is going to be an extremely close election. I think Mario Cuomo is going to win it, but he's going to win it just by a little. One thing that you and I have talked about mm. off mic um, several times over the point of this campaign. You're going to tell? No. Go well, yeah, I am going to tell. But the question is, do you really think Mario Cuomo wanted to be governor again? Retrospectively, I think he thought he was doing his duty. He's a man who believes in doing his duty. Uh, he's a man of tremendous dignity. I think that he thought he was doing it for others, but that he didn't have his heart the way I've seen it in other campaigns. So therefore, I'm going to say I don't think so. I think looking back on it, he didn't. I don't think he wanted it the way he, he, he could have. And you know, David, uh, this campaign was only lost by a couple hundred thousand votes. So a little bit more, and he might have made it. Where are we supposed to go? What direction are we supposed to travel in? E.B. White told us, remember, New York is to the nation, but the church spire is to the village, the symbol of aspiration and faith. The white plume saying, the way is up. Not down, not backward, up. Excelsior, let's keep going up. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you for everything.